So here we are coming into the last few weeks of homeschool and I want to share with you today um, where we are in our homeschool, how I'm feeling this year, which is different than I've ever felt when it comes to the end of the school year. Um, and so I want to talk about that. And then I want to share with you some of the ways that I stay focused um, at the end of a school year on the school that still needs to happen. And I also want to share with you the checklist that I created at the end of the school year last year that I'm using again this year. And I'll put a link in the description box below if you'd like to grab a copy of that checklist. Um, but it helps me just sort through the final things that need to happen this school year. Well, welcome to Born for Homeschool. My name is Rachel Bourne. My husband and I have four kiddos and I homeschool the oldest three. And so this year we have a first grader, a third grader, and a sixth grader. And coming into the end of the school year this year, I, at the beginning, of, at the end of last school year, I created a um, checklist so that it can just easily help me to remember all of the things that I need to do at the end of the year. Um, this is specifically for um, the state of Pennsylvania, which is the state that we live in and that we homeschool in. And so if you don't homeschool in the state of Pennsylvania, then I encourage you to just take some time to create your own end of school year checklist and you can just include the things that are required for your state and that way you have it as an e easy reference every single year and you don't have to kind of reinvent the, the wheel every year. So when I created this checklist, I knew that there were several different phases to um, coming to the end of the school year, winding things down, all of the paperwork and things that need to be done. And so I have a section for prepare and then begin the things that I actually need to start working on. And then important dates, I have a section for keeping track of important dates, whether that be testing or evaluations or um, co-op performances or end of school year performances. Um, I have a section uh, set aside for the dates that I want to make sure that get put on our um, calendar for the year. To be done, these are just things that I know need to happen. Our school year legally ends on June 30th and so I know that my deadline to have these things done well for the legal side of things is June 30th. I have a sort curriculum on here which absolutely does not have to happen by June 30th. And then I have a section here finalized which would be the the legal requirement, the legal filings that need to happen um, with our school district. So those need to happen by June 30th and so I want to make sure that I have everything planned and thought through and made sure that that's all ready to go. And then I also have a section for notes. So at the beginning of the checklist, I have a section of prepare and things that I need to prepare um, to prepare to wind down our homeschool year is I, we have to have evaluations each year and so I need to contact our evaluator, which I did do um, this past year and this past year, Ah, I did do this past couple of weeks, I think. I think it was two weeks ago. And then um, schedule an evaluation. Uh, once I heard back from our evaluator, I went ahead and scheduled our evaluations. And then begin portfolios. I need to, that is, is a big thing for this coming week, is to um, pull out the beginnings of our portfolio stuff, things that I stash in a folder and prep those for portfolios this year. Schedule testing, I just took care of this two days ago. I scheduled testing and then I've been talking to a friend of mine who's willing to proctor my third grader um, for her standardized testing this year. And then also schedule last day of school, that's something that I still need to do and review the legal requirements. I had pulled them up as I was looking at some of the standardized testing options. Um, so I, I did briefly review them, but I actually had a couple of questions about some of the requirements. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on the list of something that I want to do this coming week is to review the legal requirements. So that's pretty much where we are. I haven't even really begun most any of the end of school year work as far as attendance records and records and summaries and um, pulling together the portfolios. I haven't really started any of that, but I've begun the preparation work. So now that I kind of understand, have a really good grasp on where we are as far as um, the things 
preparing for the end of year, um, I also am going to grab my calendar and um, get some of the stuff written on the calendar as far as when I want to be working on portfolios and updating records and our tests and that sort of thing. So that's my next step is to update my calendar. So this is the first school year that I've come to the end or getting close to the end of school year. I'm, I'm you know, prepping the wind down weeks of our school and I'm actually not like feeling this urge to just be done, um, which is, is kind of funny. I was talking to one of my friends and, um, you know, she was just talking about like feeling ready to be done with school. And I feel like I felt like that all of the past school years. Um, I, I'm not sure what it is about this year that feels really different. I'm not sure if it's, um, like I, I'm not sure what it is about the school year, but I, I'm really happy with the learning that's happening and the growing that's happening and the curriculum that we're using, the, the materials and the resources that we're using and, just how learning and growing and education is just like being interwoven into our lives and relationships and all of that sort of thing. And so I want to enjoy the spring season. I'm not in a rush for it to be over. I'm not in a rush for, um, for summer to get here. And so there are definitely things that I'm looking forward to, um, this spring and this summer, but, um, I, I don't want to just wish the last few weeks of school away or, um, you know, anxiously wait for them to be over. Now, if you saw my last video, you know that this is not like we're just like blissfully living life um, happily with no problems whatsoever. <laughs> so if you haven't seen that video, then definitely check it out because I was in such a funk that day and I needed to take a break. And so, um, you know, I'll put a link if you want to check out the video. But I... I really am, for the most part, really happy with where we are school-wise and what, how we're learning, how we're filling our days with growing and learning together. So I don't have this incredible urge to be done with school this year. So yeah, so that's, that's a little bit different this year. I'm not feeling ready for summer yet in the best possible way. So that's really fun. So as far as suggestions when it comes to winding down the school year and, and that feeling of um, like wanting to be present and enjoy and content um, with this season and not wanting to wish it away or, you know, you know, anxiously waiting for summer. Um, things that I'm doing would be making sure that we're spending lots of time outside. So taking the things that I'm loving about this season and just focusing on those things and, um, it just uh, embracing them with my children. So spending time outside with my kids or games, we've been playing lots of games and they're educational games, fun games, um, you know, learning, spelling, counting, that sort of thing. Some of the games are games that my kids have made up and we've been doing lots of games and my kids love them. I love playing games. We've also been reading aloud a lot together. Um, we just found a lot of free books at our church library, has been getting rid of a bunch of old books that they no longer want or resources that they're not using. And so we just have this influx of new to us um, storybooks and chapter books, and we have just loved spending time reading together. And I've really made a point to make that an important part of our homeschool these days. And so I'm really embracing that now. So I encourage you, if you are finding yourself in the spot of like really looking forward to summer, just wanting the spring to be done, <laughs> um, take some time to really think about the things that um, bring you joy, that bring contentment, that bring gratitude to you and focus on, on those things. Focus on, um, 
you know, whether it's the read alouds or the family games or the time outdoors, you know, take your math outside. Um, find ways to um, just embrace the season because, you know, six weeks from now, it's going to be gone. And yet we do have these precious six weeks or however long until your homeschool is done. Or maybe you're a year round homeschooler and you're running out of steam right now. Then just take some time to embrace the beauty, the beautiful things of the season. Um, and some of you guys have snow. And so there might be this like, um, you know, just wrestling with um, ready for spring and spring is not even coming. Um, take some time to really just find the beauty in where you are. And this takes a, an intentional act on my part. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, I was really struggling. And so I made a decision, okay, Lord, I'm going to, instead of focusing on something that I was really struggling with, um, just circumstances of life, I'm going to be grateful. And so the rest of the day, I uh, challenged myself to take a picture of the tiny, small things that made me grateful. And you know, it was so eye-opening to spend the time and the energy focused on the things that I was really grateful for. I encourage you not to wait until you're in the depths of despair and, you know, giving yourself a nervous breakdown over the end of school year <laughs> instead. Um, instead of getting all the way to that point, just take a moment and meditate on the things that you're grateful for and think about them and, um, you know, praise God for them or, um, whatever you need to do to be focused on, um, gratitude and gratefulness and being content, um, in this season, in the last few weeks here as the school year is ending. So that is my encouragement to you. If you found this video helpful or encouraging, feel free to hit the like button. That is a great compliment um, for you to like this video and be sure to subscribe to Born for Homeschool if you are looking for more videos on tips and tricks, information and encouragement to support you in your homeschool. Thanks so much for watching today and I will see you again in next week's video.